Hey guys, John here, and welcome back to Synthwave Week. Now, today's patch is going to be a saw wave that is, is vintage, because it's called Vintage Saw, but it also cuts through the mix pretty substantially, and it has some nice vibrato on the mod wheel. So, let's hop into Bitwig, and let's check this bad boy out. So, it sounds a little something like this. Yeah, so we have a couple macros on this guy. So we have a cutoff because this sound can be very, very bright and really cut through the mix. So that's why there's a cutoff now for the first macro. So if we want a little bit softer. You have something like that. And we also have a resonance on the second macro. And then we have a sub saw for the third macro. So if we want it just a little bit more, uh, I guess more bass or less bass, depends on how you want to use the macro. Totally up to you. And then the fourth one, we have effects, which if we look on our effects over here, we have a couple things we're using two banks. So five total effects. So yeah, let's go back to the default for this guy and let's start recreating this in real time. So we have a fresh preset here. Let's go new preset just in case. So for this guy, we're using the analog engine, skipping engine two, and then the utility engine, we're using a little bit of stuff down over here, which we're gonna get to. So this patch is kind of fun to make because it's not simple, but it's kind of tedious maybe. I don't know, you be the judge. Okay, first one is gonna be analog engine as you probably guessed it. Now, if you look at our oscillators, we're using two saw waves and these are both gonna be 100% in the mix. So might as well just go and do that. And same as before, this drift knob here, this is at 0 0.019. By default, this is 0 0.010. So let's bring this up just a little bit to get more of that uh, randomness, I suppose. So we basically have that, nothing too crazy. But what we can do here is we can actually start applying this vibrato on our fine because as we increase the mod wheel, we want our vibrato to kind of move and kind of be a little bit exaggerated at the uh, at the very top of that. So here, if we look at our fine, we can see that this is going to be controlled by LFO1 at 0.27 depth. So LFO1, drag and drop this guy to the fine and then bring it up just by two clicks to 0.27. And if we look at this LFO on both of these, we can see that this one is a triangle wave, which is kind of typical. So we can go triangle wave. And if we play some notes, it is way too slow. So this one here is 7.88, which is for the most part, kind of higher than a general vibrato. Usually you're kind of looking at like maybe fives or six Hertz around there, but this is 7.8. So it's a little bit faster than most. So I'm kind of like that, like that. And we can put this on free running, free running if we'd like to. But now our vibrato is going every single time we hit a note. Maybe you like that, I don't know, maybe you don't, but I kind of like to have that on the mod wheel. So what we can do, if we go into LFO1 here and we look at this guy as well, we can see that here, this uh, this fine is going to be on the mod wheel, right? So what we can do is we can go over here and then we can go to the side chain and we can select our mod wheel right over here and then bring this up all the way to one, kind of like how it has over here. So when our mod wheel's down, it's like exit this uh, window so you can see it over here, our mod wheel's down. But as soon as we start bringing it up, we can start seeing the depth start getting applied. So there you go. So we have that done right over here. Now for this engine, that's pretty much all we have to do. So now we can start focusing a little bit on our filters and a little bit on our envelopes. So if we look at our envelopes here, we can see that this attack is one, which is by default. The decay is 300, which kind of doesn't really matter because we're at full sustain anyway, so we can kind of skip that as well. But our release is 395, which is a little bit more. So 395, right about, uh, there we go. So it kind of fades out or rings out a little bit more. So the first filter that we're gonna be using is the SEM or the SEM right over here. So this guy, 
and manually our cutoff is going to be at 1951 hertz so we can bring this guy down there we go so a little bit darker than we would expect but we are modulating this with the envelopes so envelope 2 at 0 0.08 I can drop this here, 0 0.08. Now this is a small modulation just to kind of get a little bit of motion. Most of the movement for the filter is going to be more so on the macro. So you can probably automate that if you'd like to, which definitely helps a lot. So envelope two, let's take a look at this guy. So attack is one, which is default. Decay is 1.99 seconds. So 1.99 seconds, a little bit longer like that. Pretty close here. And then our sustain is zero and our release is 100, which is default here. So there we go. Now we have the first macro, which is gonna be at 0.32. So we can drag and drop this here and then go 0.32 and then relabel this as cut off so we know what everything does. Okay, so we have that. Pretty cool. So next we're going to go to a multi-mode for the next filter down over here. And this guy is going to be the high pass 12 and the cutoff is going to be at 159. So we'll bring this down, let's exchange this to high pass 12. And then it's going to be 159 right around here, just to get some of that low end roll off. There we go. Okay, so the next macro is going to be our resonance. Now, this one is quite substantially high at 0.53. So we can drag and drop macro 2 on the resonance and then go 0.53, I think it said, right? Was that 5.3? Yeah, 5.3. And then relabel macro 2 as res or resonance if you want to spell out the whole word. Cool. So the third one here is going to be a subsaw, and that's done in the utility engine. And there's also a couple things done in here as well. So over here in the utility engine, we can turn this on for the first noise. Now this is going to be the white noise wide, which is going to be the default one. And we're still sending this down to filter one and we're going to increase this volume to negative, was it negative 9.65. So bring this up a little bit here. So negative 9.65. It's a little bit more uh, schmutz in there. And then we're going to have the oscillator. So we're going to turn this on. Now this is going to be a sub saw. So we can click down here for the saw. And then the fine is slightly going to be changed here. And this is, again, because we're doing the vibrato, right? Because if we have the first couple of oscillators doing the, uh, the vibrato with a mod wheel, we kind of maybe want the subsaw doing the same thing. So LFO1 at 0.27 on this guy. So on the fine, 0.27. So increase this just a little bit. Now we have to go add this to the mod wheel. And same deal as before. Hit side chain, find our mod wheel, and bring this up to one. So... Both of these will now be affected by the mod wheel. And we can even see that right over here. Okay, so next up here, this one is going to be going direct out. So we can bring this from filter to direct out, bring this all the way down here, all the way down. Sometimes it sticks there. And then our modulation depth on macro three is going to be 0.66. So drag this here to the output and then go 0.66. And then we're going to relabel this guy as subsaw. So sub saw. There we go. I think I did 0.67. Ah, there we go. 6.6. Six. There we go. So we can kind of choose how much we wanted that in there. And what's kind of cool about having this also as a direct out is one, it doesn't get processed by the effects, obviously, but also two, once our cutoff is actually pretty low that the other oscillators are getting filtered, the subsaw is still going through. So we still get a little bit of top end or unfilteredness to that subsaw, which is kind of cool. Okay, so this is pretty much all set up and done. Let's hop into our effects because this is kind of <laughs> where some of the magic happens. So EQ, we're kind of just going to this first band and we're targeting 373 Hertz. So let's go here and find our EQ, go to our first band, and let's see what we said, 373, somewhere around here, 373, 372, that's fine. And we're really taking out about three deep. So this is what we'd be taking out of this sound. Kind of weird, hollow sounding, so let's take a little bit of that out. And the next step is <laughs> classic chorus, right? Because that's going to... Make it really nice. So this is going to be on a macro and the value is 0.32. So that means to us that we need to bring this to 32%, something right around here. And some of our values, I believe the rate is the same as the delay. So what is this? 
0 0.580, 0 0.580, yeah, delay, that's gonna be the same. The depth, 4.88, so we did bring this up here. So we have our chorus here, and then the next one is going to be the multiband compressor. Now, this guy kind of brought some of those lows up here. Give this guy up just a little bit. It just gives it that oomph to it. It's really nice. So next up, we have some delay. So let's go here, add some delay. Now, this guy is going to be at 27%. So we can bring this up a little bit, something like that here. And this is going to be at a dotted eighth note. Go to eighth note and then select dotted. And let's also EQ this a little bit as well. And we have ping pong. Okay, so next up on the from the delays, we have a reverb. So let's load up this reverb. Now this guy is going to be at 28 or 28%, something right here. Then our decay is going to be 0.460, which I believe is that default? Yep. And then our size, we increased our size a little bit to one, two, three. So let's increase this here. We're sending that low pass. Yeah, I think we did that as well. And one of the last things that we kind of do have to add is a slight bit of glide because I kind of feel that works pretty cool with this type of patch. So let's go to keyboard. And if we go here, we can see that our glide time is going to be 0.29. So let's bring this up here to 0.29, something like that. And I believe this guy is going to be mono because we could do stuff like that, but maybe, maybe mono is going to be a little bit better for us. This patch will pretty much cut through any mix that you that you have, right? So now the last thing we have to do is add the last macro on the fourth one. So we can drag it up this fourth one to our chorus. And I generally leave the multiband alone because I don't really want to put that on a macro. So this can be 32%. So bring this up to 0.32. And then our next one here is going to be a delay, which we can use that. And then reverb and use that. So our delay is 27, so 0.27. And then our reverb is 28 or something like that, which is fine, 28. Cool. And then relabel this as FX and put the macro all the way to the top. And there you have it. You have the vintage saw that <laughs> cuts through quite a lot of mixes. So yeah, this is the patch. If you want to download this for free and you don't want to remake this, there's a link in the video description below and it can be yours. Thanks so much for watching and we'll see you in the next video.